Thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the shop. What are we doing today? We're getting this truck running today. Oh man, I hope we're getting this truck running today. I have managed to get a little bit farther from where we ended in the last video. Uh, last time we were hooking up the lines for the disaster prevention kit. I've got the fuel pressure sensor. Uh, I've now got the oil filter housing back in with the new lines in the back. I've also got the fuel rail put back in place, connected all the injector supply, as well as all the injector returns. And those lines are connected down and behind the oil filter. I've also taken the old fuel lines that ran in behind the oil filter and I've made myself a loop line. So now the fuel line that runs up from the tank just loops and goes back to the turn. And that's gonna allow me to flush the two nylon lines that I'm not replacing that run from the tank up to the back of the engine and back to the tank. I realize that may seem a little bit risky in not replacing those lines, but the line that's supplying the engine is downstream of a filter. So if any metal particles went back to the tank and got sucked up and sent back towards the engine, they should have been caught in the fuel filter. Down by the fuel tank, I have replaced the line that runs to the electric lift pump. And I have replaced, I don't know if I'll get in there. Uh, I'm not sure, this filter does not show up in the Fuso fuel diagram but my truck had one there, so I've replaced it. I've stuck a couple of magnets on there for now, see if I can pick up any metal filings. And all the line that runs back into the fuel tank. And if there was any debris in the return line, well, it's going back to the tank anyway, which would then get sucked up and run through that filter up on top of the tank before going back through the pump and back to the filter again. So again, I'm not overly concerned if there was debris in these lines, it should get filtered out pretty quickly. So what does that leave for today? Well, we've got to install the return filter so that we can capture anything that's still in the system, flush the system, and then see if we can get it to start. Oh, and if you haven't watched the first video in the DIY disaster prevention kit install for the Fuso, you might want to watch that one first because this video will make a lot more sense. Let's talk about this return filter. Where is the best place to put it? Well, it needs to go somewhere in between the engine and the fuel tank, and to me, the most logical spot is gonna be right where this flex line, which is a return line, connects with the nylon line that's coming from the engine. Lucky for us, it just so happens that that space is exactly the right size for this filter. But obviously this filter mounting pattern does not match what's on the frame. So I've designed and 3D printed a PETG carbon fiber mounting bracket. Oh, come on, you knew I had a 3D printed solution. Let's see what it looks like when it's put together. We've got the top bracket nicely molded into the top and we've got a little cut out there for the nut that holds the filter to the original filter bracket. We can get at the back of the second one. We've got a little brace that matches the radius of the filter down at the bottom. And then these three holes in the back match the holes in the frame of the truck. The holes in the frame from the factory are 10 millimeter, but I want to use an eight millimeter bolt. I think 10 is a little bit excessive for a fuel filter. So I've made some little T washer spacers that slip onto the bolt. And now we have an eight millimeter bolt for a 10 millimeter hole. Now the top two holes on my frame were actually drilled out to half inch or 12 millimeter. So what I've done is I've made the three holes on this all 12 millimeter. And that matches the step in the bolt. So the back portion is 12 to fit into my bracket and the front portion for the lower hole is 10. And I can flip these around to use them the other way around for the upper holes. In the process of prototyping this filter bracket, I have realized that it would be easier with a little bit less meat on this gusset to be able to get your finger in there to get these bolts in. And if I had a hole in the bottom, then I could get my finger or wrench up through the bottom to be able to tighten these. So I've gone back and I've updated this model and I'll probably be replacing this one. And if you're wondering, that's great, but I don't have that model. Well, take a look in the video description because I placed a link where you can download the STL file and print one for yourself. Now, if you don't have a 3D printer, first of all, what are you waiting for? Get one, they're awesome. And second of all, leave a comment in the video description or on the page where you can download the model and we'll see what we can get sorted out for you. But for now, let's get this filter mounted. Well, that didn't start out too well. I haven't even got the first bolt in yet and realized that I need to make another revision to this. Now, luckily I can still reuse this bracket and put it together, but I actually need to flip over the metal bracket because 
all my lines are directly in line with the structure on each side. Whoops, not really a big deal. I'm just flipping the bracket over on top. And actually I think it works out better because it gives me better access to the nuts on the back side and better access to the bolts from the front side. And that's the best part about 3D printing is I just go back to SketchUp where I drew this, modify the file and print another one. But for now, this one will work. So I'm gonna continue with this one at least to get us to the point of the system being complete. Easy to swap this out later. If you follow the link to download the file for this or any of the other parts I list there, I'll always upload any future updates so you'll get the most recent file. Now that the filter is mounted, I'm going to take two of these 90 degree elbows out so I can reuse them with some new hose. If you've never taken this type of fitting apart before, it's pretty easy to do. All you need to do is find the end, take a pair of side cutters, and kind of squeeze them underneath lifts the edge up and then you just grab the edge and pull back and then peel it open once you have the clamp off just a matter of pulling the fitting out of the hose which can be pretty tight but they do come out for the connection of the fuel return into the return filter i'll be using the last piece of this blue hose which is about 13 and a half inches long or 345 millimeters I've tied it into one of the 90 degree fittings that I've taken from the other hose kit. And we're going to connect it on the inlet side of the filter, which unfortunately is the back, but it seems to work out quite well. And then it's going to run down here. And just in behind the fuel filter, we're going to take the blue line running to the return filter and replace the line that goes to the tank. And finally, with the new return line going from the truck up to the inlet of the filter, we can take the original return line, install that last 90 degree fitting and pop it on to the outlet of the filter. And now we should have a fully installed disaster prevention kit on our 2013 Mitsubishi Fuso FG. Now, I should be clear, this does not prevent your fuel pump from catastrophically failing. It just prevents the outfall of that failure from impacting everything else in your fuel system. Now, if you want to reduce the likelihood of your CP4 fuel pump failing in the first place, it's highly recommended that you use a diesel additive, but we'll talk more about that in a different episode. Now, as I said back in the beginning of this video, before I start pushing this fuel into the engine, I want to flush out the lines and I want to circulate the system. So in order to do that, I'm going to directly power the fuel pump from my NOCO booster pack, and I picked up some little jumper leads on Amazon so that I can control when that pump turns on and off. If I try and key it and run it from the ignition and I have a leak and I shut the ignition off, it's gonna to continue to run and leak fuel all over the place. With the pump running, we can hear air being pushed through the system and I'm going to quickly check for leaks. I don't appear to have any leaks anywhere in the system up to the loop around point. So this is the supply and return to the engine loop back. So this can just continuously flow through the fuel pump, through the system until I'm comfortable that any debris that may have been in there is no longer in there. Well, the fuel pump has been running for about an hour now and there's no signs of leaks anywhere and there's no sounds of air coming into the system. So we should be good on that front. While that has been running, I have been connecting up the wiring for the fuel pressure gauge, which is now up in the dash, so that when we take the next step and disconnect the loop line and reconnect the engine, we can see if there's sufficient pressure being pushed up by the fuel pump. To disconnect the lines, I'm using the 3D printed tools I used in the previous episode, which I've linked again in the video description. Now that the fuel lines are reconnected, I wanna run the pump again manually, not through the truck, and verify there's no leaks anywhere on the stuff that we did on the engine. Once I've confirmed that, I'll reconnect the wiring on the pump and then we can run normally. So up at the engine, I can hear a little bit of air flowing through the system, which makes sense because there's been nothing in it. And we're going to take a look at all the connections up here. Make sure I don't have any fuel leaking anywhere. And then we should be good to go. All right up in the cab, uh, before I set the cab down, I cracked the nut at each of the injectors with the electric pump running, made sure I had fuel there. I had fuel at all four injectors. So I've connected my fuel pressure gauge temporarily, get powered 
from this so I can see it at all times. We key the ignition on, the electric pump kicks on and we're getting 60 PSI at the fuel pump, which seems logical for an electric pump. And we know we have fuel all the way to the rails. I'm gonna wait till that fuel pump kicks off. We're gonna give this a try. No, I'm not going to wait for the pump to kick off. I'm just going to... Oh, there it is. <laughs> 